Like it was once my mom like was in the toilet and then she fell. I can hear like a lot of bah. Then I, I rushed to the toilet and then I saw her on the floor and I was helping her up, but I started laughing. Because I was like, oh my god, what such are you a bad doctor. And then my uncle was like, hey, not funny lah, your mom fell, like mm-hmm. why are you laughing? And my mom, because my mom's a counsellor, and my mom's like, ah. no lah, I think she's just shocked. So when she laughed and she's shocked, she couldn't like stop. Yeah. It's kind of like, like stuck something, as she mentioned something there, but I was young lah. What if I laugh when strangers fall? Okay, <laughs> that's so <laughs> dark. Honey, it's just dark, guys. I mean, don't you laugh when kids fall down? If they're oh. annoying, it's yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Don't be, man. Sorry, auntie. Sorry, uncle. You're also like, hey, who are you? This podcast is brought to you by SPM Flix. And powered by BC Education. Hi, guys. Hi guys. Welcome, Welcome to, to Forey. I'm Joshua. I'm your host for today, and I also have my co-host Sam over here. I'm part of the BAC team over here, so I also do a bit of marketing and I also do a uh, digital experience. But Sam, you want to explain what do you do over here? Yes. Hi, I'm Sam. I do social media and also TikTok in BAC Education as well. What is for real podcast, right? Mm. So what we are doing is uh, we are talking about the ups and downs of you know teenagers. You know, they're going through their life and stuff like that. So we'll touch on certain topics about it. For that, we have two... Oh, sorry. <laughs> we have two ladies sitting here with us. So I would like to introduce them. First up, we have Miss Ivy Josiah. Welcome. She's the head of program and also lecturer for psychology in Veritas University College. Welcome, Miss Ivy. Woo! And we also have another guest, which oh, is Ivy, yes, who's also a student over here in Veritas. And she's doing foundation in arts. So welcome, welcome Hari. Hari. Welcome. <laughs> so yeah, Sam, you want to explain yeah. what you're doing today? So um, you guys have probably heard of midlife crisis. I've also heard of it last. Our uncles and aunties probably thought, hey, when I'm 40, I feel like I don't know what to do. Lah. It's like, I don't know how to get married. Why is too single and etc. <laughs> but do you know that actually young ones, young links also have something called quarter life crisis. So... The life expectancy of a human most likely is about 100 years, la, give or take. And a quarter of it is probably 25 years. It is 25 years. Mm-hmm. So we say quarter life crisis is when in between your late teens, 16 to 17, mm-hmm. up until your mid teens, and eh, teens, blah, mid 20s or late 20s. So someone that's transitioning from like high school to whether you want to go to college or not. And after college, you go work. So I'm sure, I, I mean, for me personally also, back then, I can imagine all the turmoil that I was going through, like, like love problem, la, got parents <laughs> problem, la, got studies problem, la, and all oh, like Joshua, la, got, got dating problem. Hey, what, what, <laughs> what are you? <laughs> maybe, 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 I, I think so. La, la. <laughs> but yeah, so what do you think about this? Maybe perhaps you can have Miss Ivy first to talk. Yeah, yeah. Do you think quarter life crisis is a thing and what do you what's your yeah. perception and what's your opinion on since you got a professional uh, <laughs> background behind it <laughs> someone who knows <laughs> psychology okay please do so basically quarter life crisis is basically um, it happens when you're like direction does you don't know where to go crisis. and what to do you know so some people you know after high school they finish their studies and then they say that okay um there are so many influences out there mm-hmm. maybe i should not continue college and stuff like that but you see the thing is the best thing you can become an influencer later on mm-hmm. but what if you have an education background mm-hmm. you know you know what is the standards out there you know how to maybe grab customers uh, attention clients mm-hmm. attention and all this stuff so when you learn, you have that education background, it's good for you to become an influencer, but a successful one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can take example uh, like Kairul Amin, if you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know Kairul Amin. Mm-hmm. So, I was so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I know, I know Kairul Amin. So he's a good influencer, actually. Yeah. So He was something. Like, he was <laughs> so, a good example. Yeah. And then, you know, quarter life crisis. Some people after that may be once they're done with college, okay? Mm. They're done with college mm. and they don't know where to go. Mm. Okay, they don't know where to go, which job am I supposed to go in? They're like, so, it's very real. Like, a lot of people probably go through that, especially nowadays. <laughs> exactly. True, true, true. So, you know, everyone at certain point, I'm sure, they'll go through this. Quite what a are you? 
Did you experience anything like that? Okay, I did actually. Oh, spill, 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 spill. <laughs> spill the tea. So, I would like to know. What happened was I graduated uh, from my degree I finished when I was 22. Mm-hmm. So, end of okay. 22. And then um, I was like, okay, psychology, what can I do with it? So, people say, you know, you can go into teaching, you can go into marketing and stuff like that. Then I went into marketing. Okay, I was doing ma- marketing. And at one point, I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. It's not my thing. I don't really like doing it. So, I just, uh, I actually resigned from my job. How long so, did you work for? For around, almost one year. Okay, so almost one year. So, I was like, okay, I think I want to resign. And I'm done. So, I was like sitting at home thinking, I really don't know what to do. So, at one point, I was like, okay, maybe I should continue my studies, going to master's. And you know, master's, there are so many fields in it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, like psychology, they have clinical, they have counseling, they have industrial organizational psychology. And even then, I was directionless. Mm-hmm. I was like, what am I supposed mm-hmm. to do? So I went into research because I actually know that I was I like research. Mm-hmm. So I did that and here came COVID. Oh. It was 2020. Mm-hmm. COVID. So I was like at home, don't know what to do, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel very stressed up and everything. So at one point I'm done with my studies and I knew I like doing research. Mm-hmm. Okay, I knew I like doing research and then I ran into lecturing. What research did you do? Just, just like a brief. Okay, so my research was uh, self-regulation mm-hmm. and resilience as the predictors of active procrastination. Mm-hmm. That was my title. My favorite word, procrastination. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will ask you a question yeah, you like about that later. My title is your favorite word. It doesn't mean I did that. Yeah, what about you, Han? Yeah. What do you think about quarter-life crisis or did you yourself go through an almost quarter-life crisis? Oh, are you in the quarter life crisis? <laughs> <laughs> are you? Go Please don't tell. <laughs> oh, you gone past it. Yeah. Oh, you in it? Uh, I was. Ooh, in 2020 okay. as well. Oh. During MCO? Yeah. Oh. Uh, my dad died. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm so, so sorry. No, no. It's all right. <laughs> But was it because of COVID? No, it was because of cancer. Oh. So, I was... Obviously, I was quite stumped because... Mm. I was the you know, typical daddy's girl. Mm. I was really close yeah, to my dad. Yeah. And then suddenly he passed. So I, w- I was quite stumped as to what I want to further my studies mm. in. Mm. So I thought I wanted to do something that can commemorate my dad. Right. But I was like quite stumped for a while. Mm. But then now I have choose one path. Is there is uh what why what was the reason you wanted to commemorate? What did he do? Did, was he in a certain field, or was it just his passion that you felt like you wanted to, yeah, you know, commemorate that? I and mean, he was he was in the Marines. He was a police officer as well. So I wanted to do something that's like in that kind of field. Oh, I wanted to take law, but then it didn't happen. <laughs> He is quite a musical person as well. Mm. So I, I tried, I tried learning, you know, the piano and the ukulele, but then I quite struggled with that. So mm. I hope that, you know, with all of my achievements and what path I chose to take now, mm. I hope that he's proud of me. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm yeah. Definitely sure. I feel. I feel like you turn out. I mean, just knowing you for the past, how how are we talking about? Ben Minis, I feel like I can see so much energy coming yeah, from yeah, yeah, positivity, definitely. and I think that whatever because I, I my dad also passed away when I was very young, but unfortunately I did not have the um privilege of being close with him. I'm closer to my mom already. Actually, my mom is a single working mom since young, so I cause I'm I did not have that mm. positive outcome out of it. More like I wanted to just help my mom, and my dad was more yeah. like a Let bygones be bygones back then, lah. Uh. Yeah, but he co- commonly did. He <laughs> did well. Yeah, he turned out. I think. But so I think mm. um they have amazing stories. Yeah. So like the the question is how do we overcome this quarter life crisis? Right. So how did you overcome it? Since 
like you felt like you needed you wanted to commemorate him and yes you went through several things that you tried you didn't manage to have interest or like you say law didn't work out and so what are you doing now and how did you come upon it how did you decide on that mm-hmm. i mean since i was young i knew that my dad was kind of a maths guy mm. so i thought about doing accounting because it does require math but it's not like you know math math mm. <laughs> that's it <laughs> so, yeah so to safe to say your dad was a very very strong like person that kind of influenced a lot of your decisions yes, yes. i mean looking back mm-hmm. most of my memories are with him mm. rather than my mom unfortunately so because i was closer way. to him mm-hmm. yeah. do you have other siblings as well i have a brother what wow. about him yeah what was he close with your dad or your mom yeah i'm more to my mom you know oh. typical okay, la, like so. balance um. yeah. same last <laughs> same my I, my brother's closer to my mom and i'm more like the independent child back then yes a lot yeah la. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so Miss Ivy, do you have any um, idea of how to overcome this quality life crisis? So what I would suggest, mm-hmm. okay, as I also went okay. through it, right? right? So it was during pandemic, okay, those was the time and you know, everyone was at home. You yeah. cannot do anything, okay? Can I just say, I enjoyed being at home. <laughs> like that. I was the... I was well, the, don't you feel like bored? No, I didn't yeah. want to leave my house. I, I wanted to leave my house. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, was lifted, right? <laughs> then the, when I go through the roadblock to go back to my house, yeah. all the police there, I'm like, can you just let me just go home? <laughs> I just want to stay at home. I never want to go out. When my when my employer at that time said, uh, employer at that time said, oh, it's time to come back to work. It's like income time to come back physically. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, it's, it's, see, I'm one of the one that I was happy about staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I felt stressed during that time. Mm. So what I did was I love watching movies. Okay, uh, I love watching movies. So I'll go and find all the movies that I haven't watched and, you know, took my time. And then what happened was when the MCO was lifted, I like running. Mm-hmm. I like running. So it was one of my uh, activity. And there's a park near my house, a big lake in the park. So what I did was I went to the park, started running. Okay, started running. And then I feel it's good to see the view in the park. And mm-hmm. everything. But for others, what I would suggest is, mm-hmm. you know, take your time, do something that you actually enjoy. Mm-hmm. It can actually release your stress mm-hmm. and, you know, make you think. Yeah. Just calm down. And realize that, you know, like everybody will go through it someday. So maybe do something that you like. For I was distracted. There was like a ghost that came by and a disco. Yeah. <laughs> so I was distracted. On it. <laughs> I like watching movies as well. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, it's important to have a coping mechanism. Mm-hmm. Now, what about you, Joshua? What was your coping me- mechanism? My coping mechanism, uh, I feel like watching movies, <laughs> but I also like listening to music. So, which is the reason why I'm also IDJ, like, as a mm-hmm. hobby as for offline. So, like, um, I feel like that's how I relax. That's how I let go. That, that's how, you know, I just, like, you know, it's just my me time to me. Okay. So, so, you know, I just enjoy. Just escape, uh. Yeah, just escape, you know. So, like, I mean, I enjoy it, like. It, it, it calms me down and stuff like that. So I get when people say, you know, you have to find a, another thing to do mm-hmm. so that, you know, you forget. Well, I won't say forget, but like, you know, you don't think about being so stressed or being that quality life mm. crisis moment, right. you know? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh, it takes your mind away from it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh yeah. my God, honey, what, what do you like to do other than maths? Yeah. All right, what is that? I like maths. <laughs> <laughs> I like listening to music. Oh, uh, sleep. Yes. Oh, I love sleep. Who doesn't like sleep? Like, she doesn't wake up. Like, she doesn't wake up. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. It's nice to be dead sometimes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I think it's very dark. I think it's funny. Do you like, like, satire and dark humor? I do. Okay, yeah. I, get, I can get the one. <laughs> She's the type that likes to poke fun and, like, Love. Actually, yeah. that's true. Like, I feel like people that's gone through certain dark 
parts of their life, right? They realize that because it's dark, you think that you are engulfed in darkness and then you cannot escape. Mm -hmm. But then actually then there's a certain way it's either you look for like light Mm -hmm. or you you think that, you know what, what's the big deal about it? Mm -hmm. So when it's not a big deal, then sometimes you tend to laugh at yourself. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah, it is a coping mechanism actually. I think psychologically it means I can advise advise more about it. What do you think about um, you know, I let me tell you a short story. I, I want to know your opinion of this. Like, there was once my mom, like, was in the toilet, and then she walked, and then she fell. I can hear like a lot of bah. Then I I rushed to the toilet, and then I saw her on the floor, and I was helping her, up, but I started laughing, because I was like, oh my god, why are you on the floor? Then we are the story going continuing. Then I was like, oh, you're on the floor. Then I was laughing, like, ha, 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 you're on the floor. Mm. And I was helping her, but then I couldn't stop laughing. Mm. And then my uncle was like, hey, not funny, like, your mom fell. Like, mm. why are you laughing? And then my mom, because my mom's a counsellor, and my mom's like, ah. no, la, I think she's just shocked. So mm. when she laughed and she's mm. shocked, she couldn't, like, stop. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, like, like stuck something. Like, she mentioned something when mm. I was young. La. Mm-hmm. What do you think about this? That have, have you heard of this kind of, like, um mechanism and how it's... Yes, it happens to people. Actually, it's true. Oh. Because, you know, sometimes you try to hide it. There's a different way of, like, mm. you come over with it. So, for example, you were actually shocked. But then su- you started laughing. Mm-hmm. To, to show, start- to hide our scared yes. for my mom. Correct. Oh, it's something... Yes. Very, yeah. <laughs> and another thought is, this is just my thought. Mm. Maybe because you're actually attached to her. You're attached. So you you thought that it was like, oh, something funny. Okay. Let's say if a stranger fell down, would you laugh? No, right? No, probably not. Nah. I'll, I'll be worried. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you see, because you have that bond with your mother. Mm. Mm. So it's that different thought of it. What, what if I laugh when strangers fall? Okay, that is so dark. Honey, just dark, guys. I mean, don't you laugh when kids fall down? If they're no. annoying kids, yes. Yeah, yes, I agree. It's me, man. Sorry, auntie. Sorry, uncle. You're just like, hey, are you okay? No, you're just like, ha, ha, ha. Hey, but you know, right? Like, in, like nowadays, what people, when they laugh, the first thing they do is like, you take video and all. I think I am considered considerate enough mm-hmm. to be like, hey, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Before like picking up our phone and be like, that's what's funny, viral opportunity, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like you were saying like, you know, how that new generation now, they like to take mm-hmm. videos and everything. Right. So I just want to touch a bit on that. So like, you know, there's like new generation and the older generation, they mm-hmm. both have like different point of ways, views. Yeah, mm-hmm. point of views or different ways to dealing with stress and everything. Mm-hmm. So can you explain in terms of the mental health, I think that is a very common uh, yeah. thing going around. Mm-hmm. Like especially for the newer generation, you know, they are so stressed. Mm-hmm. It's so, you know, they, they find uh, depression, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, how do so, like, cope yeah, with that? Really cool. You see, if you will compare both generations, right? Like the older generations, they were thought that they need to go through it. Mm-hmm. Okay, they were thought that they need to go through it, you know. Put your, bring up your resilient, become a resilient mm-hmm. person. So whatever, you know, when people say, you know, okay, you do this, you do that, they will follow. Okay, they will follow. But if you notice the new generation, right, they tell you whatever you need to do, they will give out their opinion. Yeah. Why, why should I do this and why, you know? So basically, because older generation, they thought that you have to follow, you have to do this and everything. So they are built to cope up with that stress already. But newer generations, if you notice, like, um, we teach them to actually, you know, if you don't feel right, you speak out. Okay, if you don't feel what is good. Social media also plays a big part of it. Correct. Social media and everything. So, whenever they go through a task or anything, they'll get stressed Mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. That's why nowadays we need a lot of mental health support Mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they are... They feel like, okay, they cannot cope up with this and that. So, they need someone to speak up with with and everything. Mm. So, that's why I believe that the way of bringing up is very different. Mm. But it's not that 
I do uh, feel that some people, they say that, oh, the newer generations are very weak. That's why they feel very stressed and all. We shouldn't actually say like that. Like aunties and uncles tend to say, why are they so skip skip on a boy? Like complain, you know, skip skip like depressed. Apparently, they will say stuff like they just throw the word depressed. You know, honey, how, what year were you born in? So, so far. Thousand. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 older, <laughs> So you are born in two thousand five. I you are the generation Z. Yes. Um. What do you think about mental health as someone that's in the new generation? Or your perception of mental health? It can be either way. I think it's just a part of life. You know, you 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 have your ups and downs, and you just need to find ways to get out, get out of it, overcome it. And try not to sort of how, how do I put this? Try not to just turn your attention like let's say you have really bad thoughts, right? Mm. I I had that. Mm. I had really bad thoughts about like my mom dying. Mm. <laughs> so it's about that. Very scary. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I always have those thoughts. Mm. And then one thing that my counselor said to me that still mm. sticks with me now is. Try not to feed into those thoughts mm. because it can turn into manifestation. Oh, right. So it can be manifested. Mm. So try to think about positive stuff so you can manifest those positive stuff instead of the bad ones. Mm. I think that's a very good tip, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, and there are several ways you can do it. What do you think about that? Lisa? I mean, how do someone, um, when they are going through certain things, what are some ways they can do it? I've heard of one which is journaling. Like, I've heard of that where mm-hmm. some people say, you really have these thoughts, mm-hmm. you write it down, and then, like, you eat it and I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you burn it. <laughs> you eat it. <laughs> no, you don't eat it. So, apparently, you're supposed to tear it out mm-hmm. or burn it. Yeah, because it's something like a physical action of actually, yeah. like, like, throwing yeah, away throwing the bed. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, so, I've researched and I've seen of that. Uh, I've mm-hmm. seen that. Oh, seen I, I've, I've, done it. I've done it before. So, all about the dating life, is it? What was it about? Actually, I don't remember what it was about. <laughs> but I remember I was doing it. I think it was like some workshop or something like that. Mm-hmm. So they asked us to like write the things that you that yeah. you know you want to like remove from your life, the whatever, bad. yeah, the bad, the negative side of your stuff. Mm. So we all wrote it down and everything. Then they asked us to tear it up, then they asked us to throw it and everything. And you have to stamp on it and everything. <laughs> like, like, we went all out on it. Did you feel like it was... It did I mean, wait, because, like, you're physically doing, like, your... How to say it? Like, yeah, like, like, what you said, like, you're manifesting that, you know, you don't want this in your life. Mm-hmm. So, like, you're, like, somehow, like, this, like, we're moving it. You don't want throwing it away and stuff like that in your life, yeah. What do you That's... think about this, Miss Ivy? Like, what we talk about how this mm-hmm. physical action is helping removing this that energy actually it's true you know mm-hmm. when when you write something right okay let's imagine mm-hmm. you have a bad day mm-hmm. okay you have a bad day or something that you don't want it to maybe you don't want to think anymore mm-hmm. so you write a paper the moment you start tearing or you start throwing you are pushing out yeah you're pushing out all those bad things away and you feel like it won't come anymore uh, yeah. come into you anymore yeah. it's like you feel relief mm-hmm. when you do that so that is yeah, I think that's what we feel when you you know exactly. you don't put it into words mm-hmm. but probably if you dive in deep and try to understand mm-hmm. oneself probably at the end of the day it was really yeah, yeah. yes so that is the way so you can do anything actually it's not only tearing those papers mm-hmm. journaling you can do journaling like what you've mentioned mm-hmm. do something that you love to do mm-hmm. maybe like for me I, I wanted to feel like I'm running away from things I started running I started running. Literally. I go to the park and run. Oh. So it, when when I stop, right, I feel yeah. like it feels like I'm running away from stuff. But mm. you don't do that to yourself. You need to solve things actually. Right. But that is actually is like a exercise. Mm. So it's good. It's a healthy habit. So that's it's good, that's good. There's one tip maybe you should try. I mean, a lot of people go to the gym. <laughs> yeah, but so like, what if like people like. Like for me, I, I'm lazy, you know. I, I don't want to go to the gym or I want to, don't want to go running and everything. Like, is there another way yeah. that can overcome it? Like you said just now, you like watching movies. Mm-hmm. And listening to music. Yes. You can yeah. divert your mind to something else, right? Mm-hmm. So there's one way that you can actually do. 
Mm. That's true. Um, you know, like we want to, I want to mention, right? Like, um, like you mentioned just now about the importance of mental health and the importance of understanding it and being aware of yourself. Um, what are some changes that overall, like, what do you think society in itself can do to improve, like, maybe how the perception into mental health and also the the like overall like what changes do you think that we can improve this since um like i'm sure everyone going through certain things that such as maybe the passing of a loved one or even something that to them it's small such, such as like what Miss Ivy and what joshua had said which is like just choosing like you know sometimes you feel so stressed and then you might think that you're depressed, but maybe you're not. But actually, it can be the beginning of a depression. <laughs> so what are some changes? You know, what support that people can give to this kind of um, thoughts that they have? Okay. Like for me, you know, mental health support is really very important. Okay, colleges should have it because it's during that age we will go through, right? Yeah. Okay. This is where the quarter light comes. Yes. <laughs> So college, maybe you should have like a counsellor and try to promote, you know, through social media. Okay, mm-hmm. we have, if you have any problems or anything, you can come to the counsellor. You can promote on social media. Mm-hmm. So take that step. Use mm-hmm. social media since nowadays everything's on social media. See, yeah, that's the way you can reach out to the young generation. Correct. Mm-hmm. So that's a good way actually. Yeah, we do in BC also, we have a counselling team. Mm-hmm. And I know that Actually, a lot of people are aware of it because the lecturers tend to um, direct students that need help that they die. But overall, I don't think in the mass gen- um, general student body knows that we have a counselling team unless you are brought to the counselling yes. room. So I think, yeah, I think we can highlight that as well. Lah. Like how, oh yeah, the counselling team mm-hmm. is available. Yeah. So if you ever have certain yeah. questions, you, know, you can always reach out. So, so Counseling thing, we will. I will. I will put your Instagram. Yes. What were you? Like? I think, um, society should be a bit more open minded about stuff. Mm-hmm. Like they shouldn't shouldn't judge. That's. And then. Have you should... experienced any judging? Yeah. <laughs> we don't mind. Yeah. I don't know. Girl, my mom. <laughs> Sorry, mommy. <laughs> I was gonna watch this. <laughs> I mean, my daughter. <laughs> I sometimes, sometimes I remember when I was younger, I was afraid to say anything. Um, Again, my mom was single mom as well, yeah. and I, I was like, she's been through a lot. Like, why am I adding on to it? So I didn't say anything. But when I grew up and I moved out of the house, I realized that at the end of the day, of course, she's my mother. But she's also a person, and mm-hmm. I'm also a person. When I started talking to her, instead of like, like depending on her, but I talked to her in a way like, you also lost someone. Like I lost my dad, but you also lost your husband. So I spoke to her in a very like logical way, and I and I felt like that really helped a lot. So I think that, I think yeah, I think it's important to allow her to understand it later on. Maybe not not now, but maybe later on she will also will go out. Yeah. My game, please continue. Like, what kind of judging that mommy did? <laughs> uh like I was going through some problems. Mm-hmm. Relationship problems. So <laughs> I <laughs> I mean it's gone now so <laughs> No no problem Dana. the problem is gone. Yes. Okay. So uh I don't like self diagnose or anything but that time I was my counselor said I was exhibiting symptoms of depression mm. so I, when I was back home I you know there's some days where I get down mm. and I start crying out of nowhere yeah. so of course I don't want to just stay in my room especially because I only go back home on weekends mm. so you know, I was sitting at the dining table just doing my stuff just doing my things my mom was at the in the living room and then well, I started crying <laughs> But silently, like a silent cries, holding it in. <laughs> and then, like, she turned, and she was talking about, like, oh, she wants to go to this, this mall because she wants to eat this, but it's far away. And then I said, yeah, can, can we go? I, I need 
I need distraction, you know, I need to walk around and look at stuff to divert my mind. And then she just looked at me, she was like, Kenapa? I'm like, why? What happened? Why are you crying? Oh, but then, you know, her tone. Yeah. I felt like scared. So I wasn't comfortable. She was saying like, Kenapa? What's up, boy? And then I said, uh, my, my ex's name. And then she said, Apa, apa dia buat? Like, I was, I didn't want to say anything because they were like close. And then I was afraid my mom would text him and, you know, say like, oh, what apa dekat anak anti kan? But uh, I didn't tell her anything. That's yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. So. How, how, after that, how did you overcome that? Like after, I mean, like, okay, dah jom makan. <laughs> no, no. I, I don't know, I just, I didn't really go away, to be honest. Yeah, up until like, I woke up with him. <laughs> so, yeah. I, and then that one really like, uh, yeah. Really la. And then I yeah. felt, I felt peace. I felt that peace. <laughs> Sometimes it's important to remember. Remove the negative. Remove the negative. Remove the negative from yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think we spoke a lot about quarter life crisis and mm. I feel like, yeah, overall, uh, we do have, um, that's why we call the episode almost quarter life crisis. Mm-hmm. We, we, everyone, not to say it like Leela, mm-hmm. but everyone is a little depressed sometimes. You have ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. It's only if you allow it to, like you say, um, eat at you mm-hmm. and manifest. Mm-hmm. Then, because I'm, some people can take it, like some people are stronger than others. Some people are weaker than others mm-hmm. and also how you are brought up. So I think that overall, um, I hope this helps them by listening to Miss Ivy, yeah. listening to the story of Honey. I hope, they are, they are, they are, they link, they learn a few That's tips. True. I definitely did. You know, I feel like I we, I, we have a lot of common <laughs> stuff with Honey and also Miss Ivy gave a lot of important tips on how yeah. social media, how it's important to understand mm-hmm. oneself mm-hmm. and also the importance of older generation and younger generation as well. Mm-hmm. So thank you for that. But let's, let's steer away from all this mental, um, <laughs> health talk and psychology stuff. Yes. yes. What if an animal, if an animal could talk, yeah. which animal do you think is the rudest? The rudest? Each of you tell us one. If an animal could talk, mm-hmm. which animal do you think would be the rudest? In terms of, yeah, like, are all this sassy girl. <laughs> they just straight up mean the <laughs> Black cats. <gasps> I mean, it cats are... a black cat. Is yes. It? Yes. I mean, cat you won't be really right. <laughs> I mean, it can't be an orange cat because they are... Oyin. Yeah, it can't be Oyin because they have... Enough for it yeah. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so black cats. You think they'll be rude when they talk? How... It, it like... What was the cat name, ah? The one... The one, the magic one with Sabrina. It's a black cat. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, Mataku. Sailor. 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 Eh, Sailor. No, no. I can't remember though. Anyone knows? Sailor, eh? yes. <laughs> he has this. He he doesn't talk, but he has this like every time, right? He has this judgmental look. I think I I get what you mean. I'll go and speak to my cat. Oh, oh. why are you rude? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. What do you think? I feel snakes. <gasps> hey, snakes. hey, hey, hey! It's a snake over here. <laughs> it's because you know you were mentioning sassy, right? Mm. So sassy, you know, call like a panda. We have the snake. Oh, <laughs> what the? Oh, I forgot. Oh, I know. <laughs> you don't watch Kubu Benda? I watch, I watch. I also forgot. But I know, I know. It's a girl, right? Yes. It's a female snake. Of course, it's sassy. So it's, it's sassy. like sassy. What, what, do, what do you think? Oh, what do I think? Yeah. I'm still thinking. You say it was. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like, this. for me, it's like either a goose. Oh, oh, like a what, what, what's your problem? Yeah, <laughs> no, I hear, I hear, so I hear like goose is like better than a, I mean, as a guard, uh, how to say, a, 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 like a pet at home, <laughs> to like, like a guard, to guard your house or whatever, you know. Goose? Yeah, you see, the oh, goose, that's, that's true. Yeah, the goose is more like, like, fierce. Yeah, fierce than, than a dog. dog, you know. Really? Yeah, they they were, like, Give me an example how a goose will talk. Really? <laughs> You mean like Thai? <laughs> no, no, I don't know do it here. <laughs> Give me an example. How, what does the goose make? Quack, quack, quack. Next. 
<laughs> what was that? What was that? What was that so funny? Well, what's yeah. watching TikTok, you know? They said goose are the gangster kampong. Exactly. <laughs> so it's <I'm> kampong. <laughs> Can you imagine? Eh, for me, ah. For me, I think, you know that. <laughs> you know that character in Madagascar? King Julian. Oh. Uh, what's called a meerkat, ah? Is it? Is it it's a new cat. He's like that. Some raccoon-looking guy with a clown. <laughs> he's yeah, oh, dead, dead, dead. Yeah, you know. Why do you make it? Is it a new cat? Anyone knows? Why is what animal? I think it's a new cat. New cat, new cat. You're good. Yeah, so oh, that's one. Then, oh, uh, yeah, a lemur. <laughs> it's a one fat lemur. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Julian. Okay, so like, thank you guys. I think y'all have give very good input on the quality life crisis. You know, I had some interesting facts. <laughs> interesting, uh, Actually, you know? some touching stories. Yes, right? Right, exactly, touching stories. So, I, I'm pretty sure people um, that are watching can relate to some of this. So, yeah. So, like, uh, thank you guys for joining us here today. You know, mm-hmm. thank you for coming here. And thank you for those that are watching. Uh, you know, so uh, just make sure to follow us on uh, SPM Flicks. At SPM Flicks. At SPM Flicks. Uh... So yeah, and uh, subscribe to our page, you know, uh, leave some comments, you know, like, who do you think is like the rudest animal from your opinion? And yeah, share your as your stories, share your tips or, you know, how to overcome this quality life crisis in the comments as well. And if you guys have any interesting topics for us to talk about in the next episode, please suggest, yeah, to please, us. Suggest, please comment. And yeah, so like, thanks for listening. Thank you, thank honey. You so thank much. you, Miss Ivy. Before we we want to say, um, the ending. So when we say the ending, please join us and say for yeah. real with us. So up till now, all the stories that we've shared and all the opinions that mm-hmm. we shared has all been for, for real. real. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do it again? Oh, you want to do it again? Again? Yeah. Where do we do it again? We do it again. Where do we look? Honey <laughs> wants to do it again. No, where, where to look? Uh, Which camera? Oh, look, look at the main camera. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Can. Okay, okay. So, um, can, please do the closing with us, guys. Our, all the stories that we've shared so far and all our opinions has all been... For real!